Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video we want to estimate the derivative of a function using its graph. So remember that when we're looking at the derivative we want to know what is the slope of that tangent line uh, and we're going to look at some very specific points. Now what will make this a little bit difficult is when you do look at a specific point to really pick out how much it changed in the y versus the x. And sometimes what we'll have to do is actually borrow a second point on that line just a little bit further out. Now here's some tips that you can use as we're going through and estimating these uh, derivatives. If the function is increasing, then the derivative should be positive at that point. And if the function is decreasing, then the function should be negative at that point. So, you know, immediately this will tell you whether your answer is in the ballpark, you know, whether it's positive or negative. Also remember that there's a few places where the derivative does not exist. So, places where the function is not continuous, at cusp or points and vertical tangents, you will not have a derivative there. All right, let's go ahead and look at these graphs and go ahead and do some derivatives. All right, so in my first function, you can see that I have a few different things in here, and we'll just try and estimate what the slope of the tangent line is for these various different points. Let's start off with the first one. Uh, what is the derivative of the function at negative seven? So find negative seven on your x-axis, then find the point on the function. So I can see that this is already on a line, so the tangent line would essentially just match it right there. I can see that the slope of this line is 1. So the derivative at negative 7 is 1. Notice how that's positive, and the function is increasing. So I know I'm in the ballpark. All right, let's do another one. What is the derivative at the point 4? So here's 4 on my x-axis, and it looks like I have this little section, which is also a line, that looks like the derivative is a negative one. So down one over one, down one over one. So negative one for my derivative. All right, let's see. Uh, what is the derivative at negative two? Well, notice at this point, uh, spot, we're not really going up, we're not really going down. This line is completely horizontal. And if it's horizontal, its slope is zero, so my tangent line will also be zero at that point. All right, a couple more. What is the derivative at 3? Oh, very interesting. Now notice that one, that if we're looking at it, say, from the right side, it looks like it has a negative slope. Things are going down. But if we look at it from the other side, it looks like it has a positive slope. Things are going up. Well, I'm interested at what's happening exactly at 3, and I can't really say one way or another. In fact, that's one of those places, a corner, where the derivative does not exist. So I'm just going to write does not exist at that point. All right, let's do one more. What is the derivative at 8? Okay, so there's an interesting one. Well, I really want to look at my tangent line through that point and maybe borrow another other couple points that are on that same tangent line. So it looks like my change in y is 1 versus the change in x, which is 2. So this is increasing 1 half. Okay, so just like that, you're looking at the slope of the tangent line, and you can do your derivatives. Uh, let's do another uh, function and look at that one. This one I decided to do a little bit uh, more curvy, and uh, we'll really have to put our thinking caps on in order to estimate that tangent line. So let's give it a go. So what is the derivative of the function at 5? So that point is sitting right there. Now, it's not exactly a level line right there, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to draw in a small tangent line so I can see kind of what the, the slope is. Let's go ahead and put that point there. Imagine a little tangent line. Okay, so now that I have a little bit more of a line to work with, I can see that the it's decreasing, it's going to be negative, it looks like it's a negative 1. So negative 1. All right, now let's try this at negative 4. Notice how that's right at the bottom of that little divot there. If I was to, you know, draw in a small little tangent line for that, you can see that this one is completely horizontal. So it's not really going up, it's not going down. So our derivative is zero. All right, uh, let's see. What is the derivative at the point negative six? So let's see, that guy's right there. Let's go ahead and draw in the line. Let's 
let's see what we can do. Uh, well, this one looks like it decreases by two and then over one, down two over one. So I'm gonna say uh, negative two over one or simply negative two for the slope of that tangent line, not bad. All right, let's see, what is the derivative at seven? Oh, we got a huge gap at seven. So here's one of those places where we can say the derivative does not exist. All right, and one more. What is the derivative at negative three? So here's negative three, there's the point. So let's carefully draw in our tangent line. Okay, something like that. And let's see, what points can we pick off of there to kind of figure out how much it's increasing? Well, it looks like it goes through this point for sure. That's at negative six, one. And it looks like it definitely goes through this point right up here at negative one, three. So the change in y would be two over one, two, three, four, five. So let's say two fifths. Positive two fifths because we are definitely increasing. So sometimes you're just gonna have to eyeball these and make your best guess on how much is changing. But hey, that's the idea behind actually estimating a limit. All right, if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.